Dances with Susie. Oh, it's a three cam setup. I hit snooze 10 times. <laughs> I recently changed my life because they moved me to the morning, which sucks. <laughs> because I am so not a morning person. For the longest time, my show was at noon. They moved me to the morning at the start of the year and I'm still not okay with it. <laughs> I mean, how dare I complain? You know, it's my dream job. I love radio with all of my soul, but I hate waking up when the sun is not there yet. I love coffee. Um, I also always go down and say hi to my dad, say hi to my dogs and have this weird habit that I need to watch something while I'm taking a shower. <laughs> so Netflix is not like my laptop is there. Try to not get it wet. It's hard, but I, I manage. And then after that, it's like a mad dash to the station because I live really far from where I work. My show starts at eight. I get there at 7.59 and 48 seconds. <laughs> I've always loved music. Um, growing up, I was a huge hip hop fan. And I just started embracing other genres as well. And growing up, like I would listen to the radio and I would try to copy the DJs. And it just sounded like such a fun job to me. Like you're in and out, three hours, you're done, you know? And to be paid to play music for a living like has always sounded like a dream to me. Radio was the next best thing, you know? And the first station I auditioned for was RX. And I didn't make it. I didn't get it. And it crushed me. Because like the whole time it was happening, I was like, oh my God, I was born for this. This is so mine, you know? So when I didn't get it, I was like, oh well, maybe I'll try corporate. But growing up, I always knew that corporate wasn't for me. So I tried other things. I wrote for magazines, I had sports columns and small newspapers. And then King DJ Logan, I met him once at a bar in here in the South. And he said, you know what? There are auditions for junior jocks at Magic. Why don't you try? So I was like, well, you know what? Why not? I auditioned, I got in as a junior jock. Less than a month later, I was offered a job. And then that's when I knew that, you know what? I really was born for this. I was born to make people in traffic feel better. And I think that's my purpose, to make people who are so pissed off on the road smile even for just a little bit. If they don't stop fishing, they leave the country. They excited. Stop it! <laughs> they excited. <laughs> Easy, hot guys. <laughs> my grandma migrated to Chicago. When she got there, she started cheering for the Bulls. And she started brainwashing us by sending us merchandise galore. So my brother was like, oh, Jordan's my favorite player. Completely brainwashed by my grandma. So me, I was like, oh, I guess that leaves me with Charles Barkley then. <laughs> At an early age, I started rooting for the underdog. <laughs> and it has not been fun. Kids, if you're watching this, root for the Warriors. <laughs> it's so much funner to root for a winning team. And then also, my uncle, my dad's brother, he was the team governor of Shell in the PBA. So he would bring us to games. When I studied in La Salle, of course, UAAP fever, I started cheering for the archers as well. And it's just, it became such a big part of me. When I was a kid, my dad would wake up at 10, 11 a.m. So that was like the norm for me. And then I found out that my Playmates, their dads would wake up at 6. I told my dad, whatever you're doing, you know, you wake up at 10, 11, that's what I want to do. So that's when I knew that corporate wasn't for me. So I wanted to find something where, like, I had my own time. I started doing, like, creative things, like writing, doing voiceovers at a really young age. Because I knew that I wanted my time to be mine. Ironically, now <laughs> I have to wake up early, but it's okay. I mean, I can't complain because it's just two hours of my day and it's two of the best hours of my day. I think there are two DJs. DJs who are more like musically inclined and then DJs who are top DJs. And I think that I am very technical, technically sound. Like I know my stuff, I can play with my eyes closed. You know, I know my music as well. 
and I can also obviously talk someone's ear off. <laughs> so I think I'm a mix of both, but I need someone to bounce off of. And that's where my partners come in. And I, I've been so blessed, I have really great partners. Uh, my partner now, his name is CJ. We've been together as radio partners for almost 10 years. I was partners with Mo as well. Everyone knows that Mo Twister is a genius. I also have a show with the boys of Boys Night Out. Everyone knows how amazing they are. I cannot take credit for anything. 90% of my radio success is because I've had such amazing partners. And I think what sets me apart from other female DJs, I don't think there's any female DJ out there like me because I am I'm pretty fearless. I'm careful in the sense that I don't want to hurt people, but if I believe in something and I think something's right, I will speak my mind about it. It would be Jason Kidd, like without a shadow of a doubt. I'm like his biggest fan in the world. You know, the whole time that he was unemployed, which was for more than a year, every day I would pray that he finally gets a job. And now he's with the Lakers. I'm so happy for him. He can finally feed our family again. <laughs> life <laughs> no seriously um, my love life is something that I try to keep like to myself everything else is out there you know I'm very open about like my family my friends everything but my relationship now I try to keep that private that's just mine you know everything else you can ask me about but my relationship that's that's just for me I spend way too much money on shoes. I had a phase where I collected Jordans. I still have them. My favorite pair would have to be my black cement breeze for the culture. <laughs> I, I really love that. I'm really into, into streetwear now. And that off-white store in Rockwell, oh my god. I need my paychecks back. <laughs> but I'm a big fan of yeah, street locks. And I spend, I spend way too much on shoes. <sighs> Worthy first. It was literally my first day as a DJ. My partner was a veteran. His name is Winner. He told me that the station had technology that could automatically sense if you said a bad word and it would automatically censor it. So, me being a newbie, oh, that's cool. He goes, try it. Try it. Really? I can, I can say anything? Yeah, you can say anything. We were on air. All the words to choose. I go, Back, back. Did it censor? Nope. No such technology exists. So I said back, back. On air, my very first day at work, I literally thought that I would have no job to go back to the next day. Out of all the curse words though, why did I choose back, back? <laughs> it's so weird. Oh, what yes, I mean. are. <laughs> Do it, do it. I like that one. <laughs> Memorable? Oh, there's so much. Um, like every day is a blessing. But the most memorable ones, uh, I would have to say, would be with like, NBA players that, that I've talked to. I've had so many unforgettable experiences, especially in sports. Thanks to Fox Sports, thanks to the NBA, but I think that would have to be my most, most memorable experience. not what anyone would consider conventionally beautiful. In an industry like this, sometimes that's really what people look for. And I knew that I had to have something that made up for the fact that I was not considered universally pretty. And I had to be extra good at what I did. This industry is, you know, you have to be young, you have to be pretty, you have to be skinny. And I am just young. <laughs> well, working to be the best, if you want to be the best, you have to believe that you are the best. I don't care if this sounds arrogant, but I really do think that I am the best at what I do. If you think that this is something that you want to get into and you think that there are things that are working against you, things that you cannot control, one thing that you can control is how good you are, how, how much you practice, how hard you work. So. Those are the variables that you know you have control over, so those are the things that you work on. My dad 
without a doubt. He is my Superman. Papa, say hi to the people on my Snapchat. Hi. Do you know what Snapchat is, ba? Snapchat. Are you fixing your hair? <laughs> <laughs> I practically copied his career path, you know, radio and then TV. It was really my dad. No one else. If you look at us, uh, you can go ahead and draw like a mustache on me. I am my dad. I do this all the time. I'm gonna show you how. Yeah. Hi, my name is Butch Gamboa and you're watching Motoring Today. I am my father. I'm Ray Butch Gamboa. Happy Motoring. So, yeah, my dad, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, my dad is my number one, my only influence. Yes, always, always. You should always read. You know, I always read. I'm on my phone like half the time on Twitter clicking on articles. Always be informed about what's current because I think that's what keeps you current as a person. Never stop learning, never stop reading, never stop exploring, never stop discovering. And the more you read, the more things you can talk about to your listeners, the more funny things you can talk to your listeners about. In terms of, of, of growth, I think a willingness to, to keep more things to yourself. And I think I owe it to my listeners to just let loose even more. Because, you know, they wake up early, you know, they're in traffic. All they want to do is smile and laugh. And I think I should really just give my all every day in doing and helping them do that. You know, I would love to have a family and to still do what I do. I think maybe 10 years ago, that was unheard of, especially for female DJs. When female DJs get married, they're done because they're considered undesirable, unmarketable. But times have changed and I'm so blessed to be in this era of radio where you can get married, you can have kids, you can still do what you do. So I think that is what's next for me, but I still, I, I still really want to keep doing what I do, you know. I, bringing people joy gives me joy. Making people laugh, that's what gets me. You know, and hopefully I can still get to do that while raising little baby Susie's. <laughs>